Today I would like to share with you three reasons why you should consider adding hypothermia to your cancer treatment center. But first, this presentation is co-sponsored by Pyrexor Medical, a global leader in the design and manufacture of superficial, interstitial, and deep regional hypothermia systems, and by contributions from Dr. Senewald Medicine Technic, founded with the aim of discovering innovative and beneficial cancer therapies. The first reason is that after 40 years of research and study, hypothermia has a large body of clinical evidence supporting the use of this therapy in the treatment of cancer. You will find thousands of documents including clinical studies, meta-analyses, and case studies documenting the efficacy of hypothermia as an adjunct to radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Hypothermia has shown effectiveness in the treatment of solid tumors, whether located superficially or deeply seated. Here are a few phase three studies highlighting tumor response. Adding hyperthermia can equal increased complete response. One of the earliest phase three randomized dual arm clinical trials was led by Dr. Ricardo Valdani on patients with advanced local regional stage four squamous cell cancer of the head and neck. Of the 41 patients treated, the radiation only arm recorded a complete response of 37% compared with 82% complete response of those treated with radiation plus hyperthermia. No clearly enhanced acute or late toxicity was reported. Published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology in 2005 by Dr. Ellen Jones of Duke University's Department of Radiology, 109 patients with breast carcinomas were enrolled in a dual-arm clinical study. Patients receiving radiation only experienced a complete response of 42% versus 66% in the radiotherapy plus hyperthermia group. By examining the subsegment of previously irradiated patients, only 23% showed complete response compared with 68% in the radiotherapy plus hyperthermia group. Published in the International Journal of Radiation Oncology, Biology, and Physics, Dr. Dada reviewed eight randomized trials comparing radiotherapy with radiotherapy plus hyperthermia in patients with recurrent chest wall tumors. A total patient population of 627 revealed that 38% complete response with radiation only and 60% complete response with radiation and hyperthermia. Dr. Dotto found when expanding the scope to include single-arm hyperthermia studies, the increased patient population of 779 revealed an increased number of complete response to 67% and an observed response of 92%. Adding hyperthermia can also equal increased survival. A landmark phase three soft tissue sarcoma study was published in 2018 in the Journal of the American Medical Association. The study encompassed nine centers in Germany, Norway, Austria, and the United States with patient population of 329. Patients were randomized and given a course of chemotherapy or chemotherapy plus hyperthermia, and they were followed over a span of 20 years. Overall survival was tabulated at the 5 and 10 year mark. There were notable increases to the median survival number. Patients who received four cycles of neoadjuvant chemotherapy saw 6.2 years post-treatment survival. Adding hyperthermia to the regimen every three weeks increased that number to 15.4 years. This study shines a light on the benefits of hyperthermia that extend beyond increasing the effectiveness of the primary therapy. Adding hyperthermia can also equal organ preservation. In a study published in The Oncologist in 2019, Merton compared the initial response and five-year survival in the treatment of muscle invasive bladder cancer. Of the 369 patient population, three arms were established, radiotherapy only, radiochemotherapy, and radiochemotherapy with hyperthermia. Initial response data shows complete response results for the radiochemotherapy 
and radiochemotherapy with hyperthermia groups to be similar, outperforming radiation only by 27%. Moving ahead five years, their survival rates in both RT and RCT groups fell, while the RCT plus hyperthermia group held steady. When they examined bladder preservation, patients who received radiochemotherapy with hyperthermia held steady. An important conclusion is that not only is radiochemotherapy plus hyperthermia an alternative to the surgical cystectomy, but it actually preserves the bladder function where a cystectomy leaves the patient with impaired bladder function. My second reason you should bring hyperthermia into your practice is because hyperthermia is a proven non-invasive drug-free radiosensitizer. Adding hyperthermia can also equal increased BED. The biological equivalent dose comes into play in recurrent cancer cases. In many cases of recurrent cancers, the desired therapeutic dose often exceeds the patient's ability to tolerate treatment. Adding hypothermia can increase the biological equivalent dose, thereby increasing the effectiveness of radiotherapy. Adding hypothermia can also equal immune modulation. We know hyperthermia supports the body's immune response. Increasing temperature around the tumor microenvironment weakens cell structure leading to cell death. Tumor cell DNA damage from radiation exposure during S phase of reproduction are inhibited from repair when exposed to therapeutic temperatures. Heat stressing tumor cells is also known to release heat shock proteins. These proteins contribute to immune response. During cell death, antigens are released and swept up by the dendritic cells and transported to the lymphatic system. Now armed with tumor-specific data, T cells emerge from the lymphatic system into the bloodstream. Heat-induced vessel perfusion brings oxygen to the hypoxic tumor ready for the next round of radiotherapy. This same process is certainly valuable as it would also support drug delivery to the tumor site. And reason three is bringing new patients to your practice. How do you bring new patients to your practice? Now there are certainly many differences around the world, how governments and institutions fund health care, and bringing in a new patient might not fall directly on your shoulders. But there is a common thread that medical treatment costs money. An investment in medical capital equipment is expensive. And I've presented just the smallest slice of evidence that hyperthermia is better for your patient. It improves outcomes. It is non-invasive. It is not complicated by drug interactions. And it presents very low toxicity in most cases. So now it's time to speak on how hyperthermia is better for your practice, the business of medicine. New and improved medical technology attracts attention, but it also builds reputations as leaders in medicine. The practice of thermal oncology fits very well into radiation therapy practice in that the medical team and the skill sets are very complementary. The team generally consists of a radiation oncologist, a radiation physicist, several radiation therapists and nurses, and the team skill requirements share many of the same elements of imaging and identifying the tumor, creating a treatment plan, logistics, and consistency of treatment scheduling. But the internet has given patients the ability to research and search out their own cancer therapies and treatment alternatives looking for the best chance of survival. So hypothermia is exactly the type of unique therapy that draws patients from outside normal geographic boundaries toward your facility. In the US, bringing in a new cancer patient represents on average of $150,000 in hospital services. There's no one single therapy that keeps the hospital doors open. Not hypothermia, not radiation therapy, but the host of services required to provide the best health care, 
It's the office visits and the imaging and the blood work and pathology, CT scans, and contrast, rehabilitation services, radiology, operating room fee, anesthesiologists, surgery, wound care, chemotherapy, infusion lab services, all these services that are generated by a single new cancer diagnosis. Hopefully now you're considering hypothermia for your thermal oncology practice. Now I'd like to introduce the Pyrexor line of hyperthermia systems. The BSD500 superficial interstitial hypothermia system. Superficial hyperthermia can treat solid tumors up to four centimeters from the skin surface. The system is portable, requires no room shielding, and is a class three prescriptive device with US FDA approval for palliative treatment of certain tumors, and can deliver both superficial and interstitial hypothermia. The BSD500 transmits RF energy at 915 megahertz, generated by eight multi-channel solid state amplifiers producing an available 480 watts. Each channel is independently adjusted for phase and amplitude. A five-point adjustable pneumatic applicator arm holds three different size waveguide applicators. A large format side-loaded waveguide applicator with a heating pattern of 12.5 by 19.5 centimeters, often used to treat large recurrent chest wall tumors. A medium side-loaded waveguide applicator with an 8 by 10 centimeter heating pattern, commonly used for soft tissue sarcomas and large skin lesions and a mini dual ridge waveguide covering a treatment area of 2.5 centimeters by 2.5 centimeters, often used for head and neck cancers. The water circulation system provides constant water volume supply to the applicator bolus with a temperature control range of 5 to 45 degrees Celsius. The system features the ability to track up to eight independent temperature probes for accurate thermal dosing and an integrated thermal calibration well that can quickly verify probe accuracy prior to treatment. The user interface is controlled by a 24-inch medical grade touchscreen monitor for improved patient monitoring and system control. One very unique feature is our support for HDR brachytherapy. Interstitial hypothermia delivered directly to the tumor site via needle catheters placed for radiation treatment. The microwave power delivered to these antennas can be adjusted in amplitude and phase to control the heating pattern to the tumor. The BSD-2000 Deep Regional Hyperthermia System. Let's start with the BSD-2000 Sigma base. The base contains the water storage tank, circulation and drain system for deionized water. Circulation pumps integrated with the water heating and chilling system provide a temperature controlled bolus for patient comfort and lifted in place using a built-in hydraulic system. The BSD-2000 offers three patient applicators. The Sigma Ellipse is an annular phased array applicator with eight dipole antennas that surround the patient. The Sigma 60 applicator has a 60 centimeter opening designed for larger patients. And the Sigma 30, designed for treatment of the limb, and can be used for pediatric patients. Mounted overhead, the temperature probe system with a motorized driver to allow for temperature mapping using up to eight probes. The temperature box has an integrated thermal well for easy and accurate temperature calibration. Powering the system is a four channel 1300 watt solid state amplifier with independent phase and amplitude adjustment capability. Maximum power output is 500 watts per channel. And the computer control system is housed in a 24 inch medical grade touch screen PC with embedded Windows operating system. The BSD 2000 3D MR Deep Regional Hypothermia System. The first image guided real time hypothermia system with non invasive thermometry. The BSD-2000 3D MR is compatible with many 70 centimeter bore 1.5T MRI systems. Please contact us for a compatibility analysis or system recommendations. Pyrexor designs a custom MR table insert engineered for easy installation, allowing for quick removal for imaging only applications. 
The Sigma I MR is an annular phased array applicator with 24 radiating dipoles and a bolus membrane. The applicator design allows for easy patient access and improved workflow. Our newly designed water system provides software controlled remote fill and drain functions, circulation, and temperature control to the applicator bolus. An 8 probe thermal mapping system is provided as backup. The 100 MHz 12 channel 1800 watt solid state amplifier offers independent phase and amplitude adjustments. The maximum power output is up to 135 watts per channel. And the computer control system is housed in a 24 inch medical grade touchscreen all in one PC with embedded Windows operating system. Hybrid hyperthermia is a further technological development of regional deep hyperthermia. Our combined certified devices meet the demand for a universal connecting module that allows cancer centers to operate their MRI devices with hyperthermia systems. The patient applicator fits most 1.5 Tesla MRI systems with 60 centimeter bore and larger, while its side entry allows for easier setup and improved patient comfort. We supply the corresponding hyperthermia control software. Sigma Vision Advanced is a completely new thermometry software, enabling users to measure, monitor, and document temperature changes during hyperthermia treatment. MR Image Guided Hyperthermia provides non-invasive, three-dimensional temperature imaging during the course of treatment, leading to optimized therapeutic results.